What's up, guys? I'm here with Prosper from the Online Prosperity Show. I'm King, and you know this is gonna be a fun event. So let's go. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show, and today we've got none other than the King himself, King Neri. How's it going, man? Yo, what's up, guys? How are you all doing? Whew, I'm, I'm fired <laughs> up. I, I'll be honest, I'm fired up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I just saw the poster behind you that says "Wake Up," so I just thought I'd wake up. Tell us a little <laughs> bit about yourself, man. What's going on? What, what's happening in the world of uh, King Neri? Okay, so um, that wake up there, it's uh, basically when I wake up, I just try to read it because, uh, you know, I, what I've learned is that how you set up your morning determines your day throughout the day. And I, I've experimented it myself. Uh, sometimes I read it, sometimes I don't. When I don't read it, my day is kind of like I don't have energy and tired and all that. I was like, well, interesting. And when I read it, I, along with the other posters, the many notes that I have, I'm like, I have energy. Like, Whoa, it's interesting. So that's kind of why I have it there. But uh, for me, my to like my whole scope is um, college dropout that didn't like didn't really fit school. So I decided I'm gonna take on the entrepreneurial journey. Um, I like, after high school, I took a year off, kind of just did my own thing. You know, did some business here and there, kind of learned uh, email marketing, Kindle publishing, network marketing stuff like that, and then. I was like, okay, I was doing those, but was, there wasn't really success because I was doing them all at the same time and, you know, chasing two rabbits at the same time. And then recently, just this January, I decided, you know what, I'm going to stop everything. I'm going to find one thing that I'm going to do and something that I like and marketing. So I started marketing for people, volunteer, just doing it for free. And then eventually I was like, okay, I can do this now. I can do this now. I'm going to start approaching restaurants and businesses. And yeah, so far so good. So now I'm focusing on restaurants and chiropractors. But yeah, so that's my whole scoop. <laughs> Great stuff. So what is it that you currently enjoy within your profession that gives you all this energy to want to do stuff? Because you did mention chiropractors. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, they're working with people with broken backs. How does that motivate you? Um, okay, so for uh, I chose chiropractic, chiropractors and restaurants for two reasons. Restaurants because I like food, right? And then the second one is the the chiropractor is the win 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 situation that I like. Is that because if I do chiropractors, it helps me out. So you know, I get I like I get paid helping the chiropractors. Chiropractors gets more client, gets more people, you know, to come in their practice. Uh, the person that you know the the client of the chiropractor, you know, they might have a headache every day or back pain, whatever. It gets fixed. And because of get fixed, you know, they can contribute to the society, which is the fort. So, you know, it's like a whole cycle. And uh, just thinking about it is like, wow, that's kind of nice. Because for me, I like, I kind of like the, the the thing about bringing the best of people because sometimes, you know, they just need a little push, a little motivation here and there to get them going. And I really like that when, you know, because if like, for example, if you have a headache, back pain all the time, you kind of lose your motivation. And if you like, once you, you know, once it's removed, like, whoa, I can do this again. And then you just, your morale goes up and then you can go back again and just contribute to society. Great stuff. So you did mention the four wins, the win for yourself, the win for um, the chiropractor getting the, the clients, and then the win for the client who is the patient for the chiropractor, and then the win right. for the world. That is right. so much input and so much influence just being done by one activity. Now, what? What made you want to get into this line of work here? You could have been an actor or you could have been a model. I mean, you've got the looks. What made you choose marketing as, as a way to go? Uh, curiosity, because I'm, I'm a curious guy. I was the kid that whenever we have a new toy, I'd break it. So, you know, I didn't get along with my brother because when we get a new toy, how does this work? You know, I kind of just like pick it and break it. I, I don't know how to fix it. I'm so sorry. You know, something like that. And then for me, I realized marketing is, you know, we're going to different phases. Before marketing was, you know, uh, billboards or well, actually flyers and then billboards and then radios and TVs and then, you know, not social media. But I know maybe maybe 10 years, 20 years down the road, there's going to be another one. And for me, I like I like learning. I like knowing stuff like just kind of like 
learning how things work. And I thought marketing, wow, I find myself enjoying, you know, searching about how things work, exploring it hands on. And so I thought, oh, wow, okay, I guess marketing is for me. And then when I did it, I actually, you know, I didn't mind working for free. And I, that's when I realized, well, I actually love what I do. So that's what made me do it. It's just the curiosity side. And, you know, just, uh, it's a good niche also because, you know, any, any business, any business needs marketing and it might like, you know, it could be different forms, but they need marketing. Great stuff. So obviously you're touching on a lot of things. There's a lot of work that's involved. So do you work on your own or do you have people that you're working around or outsourcing the work to? So at the moment I'm working on my own, but before what I did to get started was I worked with different people, you know, kind of, kind of like same age as me. We went out, you know, to me, for me to learn sales, I went out with a couple of people. We went door to door just to kind of, you know, pick each other's brain. And then I learned from that. And then, you know, working, working with the, like a mentor right now, uh, he's helping me out a lot because, you know, like for me, like I needed, like I thought I needed a mentor because I, I reached the point where I was like, okay, how do I do this? And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have anyone. So I thought, okay, I need a mentor. And then, so I'm working with him at the moment. Um, but yeah, right now, you know, just me, but eventually, of course, I'm going to, I'm going to be outsourcing some of the works once, once the volume starts picking up. So great stuff. So obviously I see you, you're doing fantastic. Um, obviously you, you've picked a niche already. That's something that a lot of people don't quite have. You're working with your chiropractors and the restaurants. And um, what, what sort of mistakes, because obviously you will encounter some other people that are starting their own digital marketing agency there. What sort of mistakes do you find other digital marketers making, um, you know, that would then contribute to their failure that you are avoiding at the moment as, 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 um, as a person who's starting a, a business? Um, there are many actually for me that fails, but one one of the thing is that you know overthinking. Sometimes, especially with sales, sometimes people overthink. They overthink what they're gonna say. They over you know analysis of analysis of paralysis is that the term, where they think too much that they ended up not doing it. You know they one once they're thinking about how to do it, they ended up creating a story in their head that how it's not gonna work. Especially with marketing, because for me marketing is always experimenting, and I think sometimes people are afraid to you know experiment, like they're afraid to try new things because you know this is how it's supposed to work, right? They have that thought that okay if this works, it's gonna work, but maybe you know maybe it's maybe there's something new and they're they're not af they're, they're afraid to try it just a little bit and maybe spend a little bit of money in making that work so that thing i think that's one of them because for me i've learned to try when i when i try different things you know like let's say ad campaigns there's 10 campaigns you know some people only have one and they spend they spend a hundred dollars putting pushing that one campaign but what i've learned is that you know but this is what my mentor told me is like split testing, you know, maybe create 10 campaigns where you have different pictures, same words, same words, different pictures, different, you know, the, the logos up here, logos somewhere, you know, it's all different. And then eventually you'll find out of those 10, two, three, you know, that is really boosting. So that's one, that's the one thing that I, like I kind of made, I made the mistake is not experimenting and sales is just, you know, kind of overtaking, you know, going to, businesses pitching them it's simple like like you have to also devaluing ourselves that's one of the things that i saw too is that most people devalue like ourselves and they price too low or sometimes they're afraid because they think oh, i'm not worthy to handle that client so you know just kind of like if you if you you gotta you gotta be confident with your own you know set of skills to be able to approach those people Great stuff. So there's a lot of motivation that goes on within working in, in your line of work. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of, you know, self um, influence or self motivation, um, things like that. How do you keep yourself inspired? Uh, every day I read a book and because for me, you know, I like uh, what I've learned too is that we are always going to be thinking about negative thoughts. It's, it's, it's normal. It's going to come there no matter what. So what I do is I just, feed myself with positive thoughts and what I do is every day uh, I have a gratitude journal where I have I write down I mean when, when I wake up I sit down that's my first thing that I do I sit down here I write down a whole page of you know what I'm grateful for my goals for the day and then before I walk out my room 
I have a bunch of sticky notes, reminders of, you know, like things to say to myself, stuff like that to, to remind myself. I have the journals there. And also before I end the night, I always like to, you know, like uh, listen to a biography of success and just surround myself with successful people too, like, because our circle is, you know, our circle will influence our thoughts. And if you're surrounded with good people that are successful, that have the drive, it's going to kind of rub off to us so it's like oh this is cool but yeah that's how, that's how i keep track you know <laughs> all right so maybe somebody's watching and is really really keen and is interested in what you've got to say um how can people get a hold of you king uh instagram facebook twitter i'm all around um with instagram so it's king.nario and then twitter same thing without the dot and facebook same thing so Great stuff. Now, if if you had an opportunity to say just one thing to somebody who's just starting off, who's going in the line of work that you're going to be doing as a um, you know digital marketing expert like yourself, what's the one thing that you would encourage them to do, or what's the one thing that you would give them as a last piece of advice for them? I like that. I would give the advice that my mentor gave me is that fail fast, because you're gonna fail anyway. If you fail fast, you're gonna learn fast. So you're gonna reap the benefits more. So just just go out there and fail, 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 and learn and learn, and then again and again, and eventually you will succeed. Wow, that is actually a really good uh, piece of advice. I think I should take take it on myself. Thank you so much, <laughs> King Neri, for joining us on this exciting episode where we were talking about you know how to be, do, and have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. And if you have been watching, obviously you can take on a few notes, uh, link, link up with King Neri on, um, on his Instagram. I'll put it all in the show notes over there. We really want you to start earning more money and doing less with less struggle, okay? So this has been Prosper, and if you're gonna be tuning into our next episode, please subscribe to this uh, channel so that you too can be, do, and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Thank you so much, King Harry. For sure. Great stuff. Thank you.